Welcome to the Well Woman Show, where we interview women executives, leaders, and entrepreneurs. And you're listening to the Well Woman Show, where motivated women achieve fulfillment and well being. You're listening to the Well Woman Show. Take time for myself by coming to things like Well Woman Drinks, to be accepting of myself no matter what. Step away from judgment as much as possible. You're listening to The Well Women Show. Just, you're going to be in for a good ride. I don't regret anything. Everything I've ever done, I've learned from it, one way or another, good or bad. Being a little bit selfish for yourself, you know, put your own oxygen mask on first and then give what's left. I'm a woman. I would prefer to, to tell my own story. My story, though it's very personal, is universal. You're listening to The Well Woman Show. And now your host, Giovanna Rossi. Hi, Giovanna Rossi here, and welcome to another episode of The Well Woman Show, where I interview women leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs about their lives and their road to becoming and being who they are today. Do you ever find yourself overwhelmed with your responsibilities, and it seems like you'll never get it all done? Well, you're not alone. We all need to remember to use our superpowers, the ones we already have but don't use all the time, and take advice and wisdom from one another. Towards the end of the show, in a segment called Superpowers for Success, I ask my guest about her superpowers, and the answers will give you the strength, perspective, and power to keep on being the well woman you are. I'm so happy you're here, so thanks for tuning in. Today's topic is how to instigate, then delegate for greater production. And hopefully by the end of the show, you'll be inspired to use the skills of those around you to reach a common goal play to their strengths rather than trying to fix their weaknesses, and use the guest's story as inspiration that you really can have it all, a thriving business and a happy family. My guest today is PJ Jonas. PJ is the founder of Goat Milk Stuff, a goat milk soap company, and mother of eight. Yes, eight. I said it. PJ runs Goat Milk Stuff with the help of her husband and her eight homeschooled children, all of whom have active positions within the soap company. Prior to starting Goat Milk Stuff and before she became a mother and homeschooling became a full-time job, PJ was an engineer. In this episode, PJ and I talk about how she takes the initiative to learn to do anything she's curious about and pass on this curiosity to her children, how she uses initiation, then delegation, to bring new projects and activities into her family life, and how she is able to balance the requirements of starting a business with raising eight children at home. You can get the free giveaway today at wellwomanlife.com slash 054 show. Now to my interview with PJ. I'm speaking with PJ Jonas today. I am so excited to talk to you, PJ. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. PJ, can we start by telling our listeners, what are you working on right now and how does it impact women's lives and well-being? Well, as far as the the business that I run right now, we're in the process of expanding um, our product line. So we're um, when we started, we were mostly offering goat milk bath and body products, and now we're offering um, food products. So things like raw milk and pasteurized milk and yogurt and keeper and things like that. So really trying to give people uh, some options for some healthy dairy as opposed to some of the the conventional <laughs> unhealthier dairy that's that most people have access to. Okay, so can you just briefly explain the difference between the healthy and the unhealthy dairy for people who may not be familiar with it or just may think like the milk they're drinking is fine that they buy at the grocery store? Yeah, so you know a lot of people have a lot of problems drinking dairy, whether it's lactose intolerance or you know, they have their allergies, things like that, cause congestion. And one of the things that I, I try and get people to understand is it's not so much the dairy as it is the way the animals that are producing that dairy is raised. So unfortunately in our country, um, we're a cow country, and most of our cows are kept in confinement operations, so they're not uh, given a lot of room to roam. But they're also fed way too much grain. You know, cows and goats are ruminants, which means they're supposed to be eating grass. And that's the way um, their stomachs are designed is to be able to process that, process that, ga- that grass. So when they're given, you know, all sorts of oats and corn and soy and things like that, it sets up a problem um, in their in their rumens, which are one of their four stomachs, and it just causes the animal to be unhealthy. 
And so because of the way we're raising these animals, they're producing milk that isn't um, as healthy. It doesn't contain all the nutrients. It's not as bioavailable as it should be. And so really just trying to raise awareness that there's a difference between the conventionally raised dairy and animals that are raised in healthy environments on grass, given room to roam, um, and that it really does affect the nutrient profile and how healthy that final finished milk is. Hmm. And what about the, just the basic difference between cow's milk and goat's milk? You know, given, you know, some cow's milk is organic and get, the cows are given room to roam and stuff. What's the difference there? Goat milk is generally um, a little easier for people to digest. So people who are lactose intolerant right now, most of them can actually are able to drink goat milk. And it's not because goat milk doesn't have any lactose. Goat milk does. It's because it's so much easier for their bodies to digest that that lactose doesn't have a chance to cause a problem. So there's there's different things like that. Um, goat milk is also has fall, uh, smaller fat globules than cow milk does, so it doesn't cause a lot of the um, congestion and stuff that people experience with with cow milk. And the, the proteins are slightly different, so they're, they're much less allergy-forming. Mm, okay. And how does your work and you providing this milk and the Bath and Body products and now the food out to the public, how does that impact women's lives and well-being specifically? Well, what I have found is that you know most women want to do the right things for themselves and for their families. They, they really want to make good choices. They really want to have good buying habits. And it's confusing because you'll read one headline and it'll tell you, you know, drink this. And then you read, you know, two weeks later, you read another headline that says what you were just told to drink is bad for you. So there's, there's a lot of confusion out there. And um, as a mom myself, you know, the whole reason I got into goats was because um, I have eight children and I wanted them to have healthy milk. And I figured the only way that I could <laughs> guarantee that was to, to produce it myself. So that's why I got goats for our family. Um, was that it's really important to find a source that you can trust. Um, you know, there's a lot of people, unfortunately, in business today that just want to make a quick buck and they're not into it for the, the long run and for the, the health of people. And so, you know, A, I provide the, the products so you can, can trust that we're doing it the right way, um, but also I try and educate people on the fact that, you know, just like we were talking about with dairy, no, dairy's really not bad. It, it's how we're, you know, treating the animals that's what's causing dairy to be a problem for most people. So there's kind of both aspects going on there. Mm. Okay. So you have eight children. That's amazing. Um, (laughs) (laughs) When did you, at at what point during the, having those eight kids, did you start your business? Was it like partway through or? Yeah. So I had gotten my first goats in 2005. Um, My first, my oldest was born in 1996. My last was born in 2007. So I had eight and 10 years there. They're all one at a time. People always want to know if there's multiples, but nope, it's just all one at a time, about a year and a half apart. And um, I I started when my first daughter was born, you know, starting to, to get into healthier eating. And it was a slow, gradual process. And so in 2005, I really decided that I had done enough research on the raw milk versus pasteurized milk debate and cow milk versus goat milk and decided that what I wanted to feed my family was raw goat milk. And so that was when I got the first goats. And, and we, we just really did everything for us. You know, we made cheese, we drank the milk. And what happened was um, at one point I had all the children in the bathtub and I was letting them splash around and I picked up the baby wash that I had always used. And I was just really upset because I, I for the first time ever, I looked at the ingredients and it was all these chemical ingredients and, and, you know, petrochemical stuff in there. And I couldn't believe I'd been using that on their skin. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to learn how to make soap. <laughs> and um, when I did, I made it. I, you know, most soap is made with water, but I was like, ah, you know, goat milk's so good. Let's put the goat milk in and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And when I put it in the shower, my husband's fingers stopped cracking and splitting. And so that was kind of like, wow, this is, you know, not just good to drink. This is really good for your skin. It was, that was a problem he'd had for years. Mm-hmm. And so when we started, um, selling it, we we got some of the soap into hands of um, some parents whose children had eczema. 
And um, this was 2008. And so when the soap got into their hands, I started getting all of these phone calls that the soap was making this huge difference on their eczema. And it was, you know, all the symptoms were disappearing. And so that was when we really decided, you know, to make a business of it and, and really take it off. So January 1st of 2009, we became a, a full-fledged business and we haven't looked back since. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I have to d- dig into that a little bit because there's a lot there. But just real quick. Does your husband now work on the business with you? Yeah, yeah. Um, he came on full-time by the end of 2009. Okay, wow. Um, what did he do before that? Um, he had a number of different careers. He was mm-hmm. a junior high uh, t- teacher, science teacher for seven years. And then when we, um, when I started the business, he was actually working as a garbage man. We would left teaching because um, anybody who <laughs> knows what it's like to teach, it's really hard to uh, – it's a very demanding job. And having eight children, we decided that he needed to spend more time with, with our kids and not other people's children. So that's what he was doing at that time. Wow. So, um, okay, I on the Well Woman Show we talk about we're very interested in sort of what women are doing in the world and how it's impacting women's health and well being, but we're also very interested in how you, as the leader in your business, the leader in your family, how you are doing it all right. So, like a little bit of the story behind your own personal um, leadership and ability to pull all this off. So, I just want to ask you. Um, when you say you realized that there were chemicals in the soap and so you decided to make it yourself, like that's a huge deal, you know, (laughs) like you, like if that's just not everybody, you know, jumps from like, oh, I don't like this. I'm going to go make my own. Like, how did that happen? And what was the story there? Well, you know, I have always been a problem solver. Um, and I'm always wanting to try and learn new things. So my sometimes it involves a lot of research. Um, you know, there there were other people uh, making soap. I didn't come across them at the time, and it was something that I was like, okay, well, you know, pioneers did this for centuries. <laughs> you know, I can figure this out too. Um, but I, I homeschool the children, and I really want their education to be very practical. Mm. And so it's something that I use that kind of opportunity to not just teach myself, but to teach them something. And so by doing that, you know, what I, what, how I end up doing it is I kind of instigate it, and then I delegate it. <laughs> You know, so like I, you know, when we started goat milk stuff, I was the one making all the soap. Well, within a year, my husband was full time making the soap. And then in three years after that, my oldest son was the one making all of the soap, you know, and by by passing those things down, it frees me up to be able to start start something new. (laughs) Right, right. Yeah, that's that's clever. So you have your whole family working on it now. It's a family business. We do. All of the children are all involved. Um, we also have six full-time employees right now. And um, the children all get salaries. They all have their specific jobs. They get salaries. They have to manage their finances. They pay their own taxes. Um, they do all of that. So it's it's definitely been a very practical education. And, and you know, the birth of goat milk stuff, all their, all their writing, all their financials, all, all of that stuff, public speaking, it just all gets really taken care of by by running the business. Wow. Okay. That's amazing. Um, how, and you said you told me already, but how old are the kids? Like what's the age span? Right now they are nine to 20. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So So, they, they all have their age appropriate roles to, to play in the business. Exactly. That's exactly what they do, you know, and, and I try and keep it where it, it's something that they enjoy. You know, there's, yeah. there's always jobs that nobody wants to do that we all kind of take turns doing, but I really try and, and gear it towards their gifts, where their talents are, and something that you know, that they enjoy doing. I try and teach them that work is, is, is something you're going to do for the rest of your life. You want to find something that you that you can jo- enjoy, and, and we we have the best of, you know of all the worlds. We get to work with our family, and we get to help people with their skin issues and with the food that they eat, and it's just it's been great. Mm. And so, are are they going to go off to college, and and how are you going to handle that when they leave? Well, what the oldest ones are doing is when they turn sixteen, they start taking classes at our local community college. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, right now. 
Um, none of them has the desire to go off to a four-year college. Uh, right now, they all want to work the business. I mean, the younger ones are still kind of <laughs> young. They may change their mind in time. But the older ones, you know, the, the 20, 18, the 16, 15, they're, they're pretty much set that this is what they want to do. So they're taking classes that can, you know, can help them with the business mm-hmm. that just broadens their environment. I keep trying to get one of them to take an accounting class, but nobody so far wants to, <laughs> wants to take an accounting class for me. <laughs> so. that would, yeah, that would be useful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone's oh. going to have to at some point. <laughs> okay, so going back to you started the business, you or you started producing these things, and then what? What was? What did you put in place to be able to take the leap from just like this is kind of a hobby, and I'm just interested in dabbling around and figuring this out to I you know, placed my product in a store or like I started selling it? Like, what was that journey like? You know, that was probably probably the scariest part of the whole thing was when um, we had the the first major decision. So we've been doing it just like you said, as a hobby, you know, doing it on the kitchen table. It was growing. We would (laughs) my husband would come home from work and and we'd be having a picnic dinner on the floor because the table was covered with soap, that kind of thing. (laughs) And it got to the point where we had to decide. Um, whether we were going to scale it up or scale it back because mm-hmm. we just we couldn't you know we were in that hard middle middle phase and we really needed my husband to come on full time but the business was not making enough to replace his salary and so that was probably the scariest point was to say okay goat milk stuff really has potential here we're going to take a risk and we're going to you know have my husband leave his job and we're just going to assume that with hard work we can really make this happen and so, you know, the whole family, we, it was a family decision. We had everybody together. We all um, decided we were going to do that. I think we kind of, the, the two-year-old just kind of raised her hand because everybody else was raising her hand. <laughs> her hand. <laughs> but, um, it, you know, it, it was something that we knew we could push. And so that those first couple years, what we ended up doing was I wanted to be an Internet-based company. Um, that was with having so many children, I needed to have that flexibility of not being in a brick and mortar store just yet. Mm -hmm. And so um, we ended up putting up the website. I taught myself how to code and and put that up. And we started doing craft fairs and festivals. And so that was, you know, something that was exhausting. And there were days that we would, you know, split in three or four different directions. Um, But it was something that we could, through hard work, put our, our soap in front of that many more eyes and therefore increase the chances of, of making sales and bringing in the income. So it was kind of scary, but it was kind of something that we were just all in together. And, you know, that makes a big difference. Hmm. Okay. Now I just thought of this, which doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about, but how do you drive around with eight kids and two, <laughs> uh, two adults? Do you have like a little bus? <laughs> we actually drive a sprinter, um, which is, it's a, um, like a big diesel vehicle, if you see FedEx drives them sometimes. And so oh. um, the we've actually had three of them over the years. Our first one was uh, customized, not by us. We got it used for 15 passengers. The second one was eight passengers, I'm sorry, 10 passengers in storage. And then the one we drive now is 12 passengers in storage. So um, they're big enough to hold all the stuff we take to craft fairs. If we can haul goats in there if we have to haul goats. And wow. So it, it, it works really well. Now, how many goats do you have right now? So we've been steadily increasing the herd. Um, when we started out, we started out with two goats years and years ago. And um, last year we milked 64. And this year we are planning to milk 80. Now, so did you the, have to move into a new house with bigger land to do this? We actually did move about five years ago. We totally outgrew our first place. There was the business, you know, goat milk stuff was just kept growing. We're like, okay, we, we, we can't do this anymore. And so we went searching and found our new farm. Our new farm is, is the perfect location. We um, are in Indiana and we back up to Highway 65, which is a major north-south route. We have billboards on the highway. Um, we're less than a mile off the exit, so we get a lot of interstate traffic and people can come. They can buy the products. They can visit the goats. We do tours and baby goats goat experiences. We um, now make goat milk gelato, which is like ice cream. Mm. So people can come and enjoy that and squat while they watch the goats. And so it's been a really good location for us. Wow. Okay, so let's dive in a little bit into you, PJ, as the leader of this effort and and a mom and a woman balancing all of this. Um, What how do you how do you take care of yourself when you're 
producing so much for everybody else. You're taking care of your family, your goats, your business, your house, presumably. And I know you said you delegate a lot, but how do you actually take care of yourself? So I'm a big believer in you have got to take care of yourself first. Otherwise, everything else falls apart. You know, that whole image they give you when you're on an airplane and if, you know, the oxygen mask drop, you have to put yours on first before putting it on your kids. You've got to make time for exercise and eating right. Um, I make that a priority because I know that if I don't make those happen, I am not as efficient. I am not as effective. My brain doesn't work as well. Um, you know, I'm more grumpy with everybody. And so I really put time into doing that. I do that for myself. I also do it because I want to model that for my children. Mm. I, you know, I want them to know that this world and this culture we live in is just constantly trying to take too much out of you. And if you don't take care of yourself, it just the rest of it all falls apart. Okay, but so, practically speaking, how does that actually happen for you with your eight kids <laughs> everywhere and your goats and your everything? <laughs> when do you do it? All right. So I, I, I am not a big believer in multitasking when it comes to things that will, um, involve thought, but exercise is the perfect place for multitasking. So mm -hmm. I do a couple of things. Every time I go to the bathroom, I do 10 squats. Right. If you're drinking water, you should be going to the bathroom several times. You just come out and you and you do ten squats. You wash your hands and you go back to what you're doing. <laughs> By the end of the day, you've you've done a hundred squats. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, and it's still it's like brushing your teeth. You you have to anchor exercise to things that you always do. Like I'm not a big believer, and you have to go off to the gym for half an hour, an hour. It's never going to happen. Mm. But you know, so when I'm brushing my teeth, I do um, calf raises. I just sit there and I do calf raises while I'm, I'm brushing my teeth. Um, I also had my husband um, build me a treadmill desk. So I have a treadmill with my computer on it so that when I'm, I'm writing, I can walk and, and work on the computer at the mm. same time. Mm -hmm. um, I have a little mini trampoline um, that I use. So if I'm you know, having a, a phone call or talking to the kids, I'll just sit there and I'll bounce on the trampoline while I'm talking to them. So it, you, know, you have to find these things to do. Like most people would not skip brushing their teeth, right? It's just a few minutes. You just do it. So, and that's one of the reasons why I love the, every time you go to the bathroom, do 10 squats because it takes a while to build that habit. But once you have that habit, it's so quick. I mean, it's, you know, you can do yeah. it in under a minute and then once it gets easy, you know, then you can do like jump squats, you know, mm. and so you can constantly be, be doing stuff like that. Um, I'm also a big believer in yoga. So before I go to bed every night, I do, um, you know, just about 10, 15 minutes of yoga, um, and sometimes it's two, but I, you know, I do some stretching before I go to bed. So really just getting it into the daily routine and not this, okay, I have to stop. I have to get changed. I have to go and, um, you know, work out and then I have to shower and come back because that's, that's just impractical for me. And for honestly, yeah. I think for most women, I like the anchoring things to anchoring your exercise to things you already do or, or anchoring your healthy habits to things you already do. And I actually do that in the morning. I do my push ups in the morning yep. or before I do anything else. Um, yeah, it's, it's habit, you know? So I tell people you wouldn't, most people would never think of skipping their teeth, no, brushing their teeth, no matter how tired you are, it's mm -hmm. just something you do. You know, and if you can make that and then, and it's amazing how much it adds up, you know, you don't need a half an hour to an hour at the gym every day if mm -hmm. you're doing these things. So PJ, you obviously have self-care, um, taken care of like you you clearly prioritize your self-care and that is probably one of the reasons you've, you've been successful what is the difference for you between self-care and self-love well when you say self-love I, I kind of get a you know a bad mental image of, of someone who's putting um, themselves and their needs above everybody else's needs, you know, and I, I, I would never want to cross into that um, because, you know, to me, what's most important is my family. And so keeping my family's needs met fulfills a part of me that, that you know, nothing else can do. Um, so I don't know if that's what you were going for, but that's well, I guess, to mind. I guess um, sometimes people confuse self-care with and self-love together. And you know, self-love is really um, s sort of that deep sense of confidence and knowing, that deep knowing that what you're doing is right and that, that you can do it. And, you know, that, that sort of knowing that when you found 
the chemicals in the soap and you were like, well, I can make my own. That that was that deep knowing, like, I can do this, you know, so, so uh, not everybody has that. And, and people are constantly trying to cultivate that sense of that deep sense of confidence and knowing. So that's more of what I was talking about. Okay, well, you know, the first thing that came to mind when you said that is, is I one of the main reasons I homeschool my children is because I believe that in the public school, it's very hard for teachers who are not as familiar with my children as I am to understand my children's strengths and weaknesses. And that as a homeschooling parent, I can teach them and strengthen their strengths and you know give them coping mechanisms for their weaknesses. And I don't think so many women, you know, in our generation, were given that sense of these are the things we're really good at. And I think if you don't have that sense of here are my strengths, here is what I excel at, here is where I, you know, can really make a difference, then it's very easy to focus on our weaknesses and kind of beat ourselves up. Mm-hmm. Because we all have them. We all have things we're not good at. Um, you know, the, the challenge is to recognize that that's everybody. And when you succeed, it's because you're playing on your, your strengths, not because you're trying to, you know, turn your weaknesses into strengths. You know, you yeah. can always improve your weaknesses, but it's never going to be your strengths. So figure out what it is you're good at, um, because we're all not good at, you know, running a business and delegating and, and all of that. Some of us are, are much better in a support, supporting, nurturing, pushing other people up kind of role. And that's, that's wonderful, too. You know, everybody needs all of those. Um, you know, the world needs all of those kinds of people. So figure it out. And, and you can do something, you know, ask the people in your life, you know, what do you think I'm good at? Sometimes you can be really surprised really surprised at the answers. You're like, oh my gosh, I never really thought about it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I would suggest. And how, what was your upbringing like in terms of how you were brought, were you raised, how were you raised so that you were uh, supported to look deeply at your own strengths and weaknesses? You know, I was um, a child of divorce. My, uh, my parents divorced when I was 10. Um, I had very loving parents. Um, but they, you know, after the divorce, I kind of pretty much raised myself and my younger brother, um, you know, they were always there, but they were, they were working very hard, um, to try and make ends meet. And so, um, you know, I, I was able to, for better or for worse, practice, you know, those skills of, of, you know, taking care of myself and and keeping my brother on the path that he was, you know, supposed to be on to get to school and all of that. Um, So I've had a lot of practice with that for for quite a while. Mm. Okay. And I wanted to ask you too, in terms of your, uh, your focus on your family and your business and homeschooling, um, clearly your kids are learning so much just by being a part of the business, you know, math and English and negotiating and <laughs> interacting as all of that stuff. Do you do any kind of community work as a family or, or as a business where you're sort of giving back to the community or, or any, you know, does, is that in, included in your whole like scheme here? Yes, we um, it's, we don't do as much as I would like because being on the farm, you know, we have to be here at the farm seven days a week. Um, so we don't get to do as much, but, um, you know, we do whatever our community is that we can, um, either have the employees can cover the, the stores for us, or it's on a, on a Sunday we'll do like we just, this holiday season, we went, um, with the community and sang at Christmas carols at the nursing home. And we went and cleaned up one of the local parks all had, you know, the rubber gloves and they're picking up all the trash and everything. Um, so we try and plug in on those kinds of things. Well, we don't get to do very many big things. We do um, a lot of donating. So we donate to, uh, we actually send soap and stuff to third world countries um, through people we know. So I have a, a friend who married a, a man from Haiti. And so when the earthquake hit, um, they actually went down and we sent them with, with as much soap as they could carry. Oh, and nice. so, so we do, yeah, we try and, I try and make giving very practical for the children um, you know, not just, okay, here, set aside this much money and send it off every, you know, every month, because as children, that's, that's, that's kind of hard to wrap their brains around. Mm-hmm. Um, we also had uh, four years ago, it's actually five years ago, this um, next month, we had a, a tornado um, in our area that did a lot of damage. A lot of people were killed. 
And um, we we did a lot of work there with cleaning up and donating and helping people. So anything where the kids, where the children can do more practical hands-on to me is a much better use of teaching them how to give back than, you know, to just teach them to set aside money and mm-hmm. and donate it through the, you know, through the mail or through yeah. know, phone call or whatnot. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The hands-on, I mean, that's how they learn. Uh, my a company, the Well Woman, well, the Well Woman Show, and then the and Well Woman Life. Um, we partner with local organizations, women's organizations, to uh, help them. Uh, it's usually organizations that are helping women in transition, either coming out of uh, prison or you know s- transitioning out of substance abuse or um, uh, that kind of thing. And so, um, anyway, there might be an opportunity for us to partner with you to to help you know, I, they always need stuff. So that might be, yeah. that might be a fun thing to do. Yep. Um, Feel free to reach out. Yeah, I will. Um, so PJ, we're going into the final segment here of the show and it's called superpowers for success. So I just want to ask you a few questions here. And the first one is what does success in life mean for you? That's easy. It's, it's children that I can be proud of that are, you know, that are caring, loving, health in healthy relationships as adults, giving back to society. Um, it, that's what it's all about. If I, you know, it's not about money to me at all. That money is just a tool to help me to teach them and, and help them grow up into what I want them to be. Mm. And when did you know, PJ, that you were really good at what you do? You know, <laughs> That's so hard to say because, you know, I grew up with a a lot of um, outward compliments. You know, people compliment me, oh, you're so smart, you're, you know, you're so good, oh, this and that. But as far as internally, um, I think it was probably after my daughter was born, my first daughter was born, I um, was working. I was an engineer and working and she was born and I was like, that's it. I don't. I don't want to work anymore. I want to be a stay-at-home mom. And I came under a lot of fire from a lot of people close to me. You know, oh, you're throwing away your education. You're, you know, you're better than that. You, you know, all of mm-hmm. all of that sort of stuff. And I was like, no. And and so it really that making that decision really clarified for me what was important and the fact that I didn't need to do a good job in the world's eyes. I needed to do a good job in my eyes and in my, my family's eyes and being home with my daughter, you know, and teaching her was, was what I was going to be the best at. Mm. Okay. And what superpower did you discover you had only to realize it was there all the time? (laughs) Um, You know, my husband said to me once, it's probably one of the, the biggest compliments he ever gave to me. Um, this probably sounds kind of weird to people, but he said to me that I've never met a problem that I couldn't solve. And when he said that, it, it just kind of knocked me back a little bit because I was like, you know what? I am not a quitter. Um, mm. And I think it's so easy. You know, I think, I think our culture sets people up to make it so easy for us to quit. Right. It's so easy to quit, to stop, to move on to something else. Say, oh, I'm going to try something else. Oh, this wasn't working. Oh, I'm going to do this. But to have that ability to push through and fight through and figure out the solution, you know, solve the problem. It doesn't mean you have to do that forever, you know, but (laughs) to not quit and and handle it before you move on, I think is I think is quite a superpower. Mm, Yeah. And PJ, what do you do when you get knocked down? How do you keep going or get back up and keep going? Um, I think I regroup with the family and I, I snuggle with my with my kids and I reconnect to what's important. Um, you know, mm-hmm. when you're when you're striving for something and um, you know, whether whether it's in your business or, you know, a personal life and and it doesn't happen, um, that can be very unsettling. But to regroup and say, Okay, well, that really stinks. I really wanted that, but I still have what's most important. Um, that can really help ground you and center you and, and kind of put things in perspective. Mm. And what advice would you give your 25-year-old self? Probably to um, be a little more patient. You know, I, I try, you know, I really wanted, when, when we started Goat Milk Stuff, 
I really wanted it to be a success. A success. I wanted my husband to come home and be able to work at full time so he could be with the family. I wanted my children to, to grow up understanding what it meant to be an entrepreneur, what it meant to be a hard worker, what it meant to you know support yourselves, all of that. And I and I really, you know, part of me wanted to be like, okay, you know, all those people said I was foolish for quitting jobs, you know, 15 years ago, whatever it was. You know, look, I, I it wasn't that I, I quit on being successful. It was that I put you know, raising my kids as more important to that. But, you know, now I can still be successful and do both. Mm. Um, So that's, you know, um, that's probably something that that helps me a lot. Mm. And PJ, do you identify as a feminist? You know, I if you ask me, I I would probably say no. um, Because for most, most people, I think, um, being a stay-at-home mom is not the ideal <laughs> being held up by feminists. Um, and I, I think that's lacking in some respects because I think that as women and as mothers, um, we have such a position of strength um, and that you can be a feminist and teach your female children, you know, your daughters, that look how much you can accomplish um, but that you don't have to sacrifice being in the home to do that. You know, it's there's so many right, like the you know I just read a statistic that how many women are now waiting until their 30s to have children mm. instead of their 20s because they're you know going after career and you know I, I read Lean In when that came out and mm. and all of these things and while I think that's right for some people, I also think that there's a lot of power in raising children. That, are, that work hard, that have a work ethic, that treat other people properly. Um, and I think we've lost, the, I think the feminist movement has lost a little bit of that balance, you know, that, that it's not just about going out and working um, and doing it out of the home. You can do it in both places. And I think that more and more feminists are embracing that and really putting that as a priority. Like, I want to, you know be able to raise kids and have a career if I want to. Um, And it doesn't have to be working outside the home. I I, I truly, yeah, I think that 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 we are moving more in that direction. I would love it because I think, you know, I think raising kids in your 20s is so much easier than raising kids in your 30s. I think you learn so much by raising kids in your 20s that can then help you in your work life in your 30s. So, you know, there's, there's, it's like anything, there's pros and cons with both ways. Um, and, and, you know, we as women are, you know, we're, we're awesome. We're strong, we're capable. Um, and I think we all just need to lift each other up no matter what choices we all individually make. Mm-hmm. Okay, last question for you. What are you reading right now? What's on your nightstand? So I just finished um, the Alexander Hamilton biography by Ron Chernow. Mm. Um, yeah, which was awesome. I absolutely loved that. Um, and I have a book right now that I'm reading called Fortune's Children. And it's actually a story about, um, it's, it's um, nonfiction. It's based on the Vanderbilt children. How Cornelius Vanderbilt was the richest man in the world, and within 50 years, all of his descendants were <laughs> had no money. They 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 just blown through all of it. Um, and one of the reasons that I'm doing that is because uh, I'm reading about that is a because I find history fascinating, but because I, you know, I want to make sure that because goat milk stuff is growing and it's successful, um, that my children don't lose sight of the fact that it's hard work that makes it <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. And you don't ever reach this point where you've arrived and, you know, you get to just rest back and let everything happen. That You, you have to keep doing it. So it, it's really crazy, this book, how they just blow through millions and millions of dollars in just so many, you know, so few years. Mm-hmm. Great. Two good book recommendations there. Um, PJ, I want to thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. That's it for our show today. I've been speaking with PJ Jonas. PJ is the founder of Goat Milk Stuff, a goat milk soap company and mother of eight homeschooled children, all of whom help run the business. PJ and I spoke about how she has learned to play to her and her children's strengths, how she uses her own curiosity as a model for her children, and how she instigates new projects in her family and then delegates tasks to family members. 
You can get the freebie this week at wellwomanlife.com slash 054 show. Our monthly live event, Well Woman Drinks, brings women together to share our successes and challenges as women leaders, moms, aunts, sisters, and all the other roles we carry. If you'd like to attend a Well Woman Drinks near you, or if there isn't one in your city yet and you'd like to start one, email me at info at wellwomanlife.com. If you enjoyed the show, please take a moment and subscribe in iTunes and leave a review. This helps raise visibility of the show, which is super helpful when it comes to producing it every week for you. You can also continue the conversation in the Well Woman Life community group at facebook.com slash groups slash Well Woman Life community. For feedback, comments, or just to let me know you were listening today, find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Well Woman Life. I'm Giovanna Rossi for the Well Woman Show. Until next time, have a super powerful week.